the story of friendship or simply the story, as we always called it is a true one. It involved a group of Italian and non-Italian people for many years, between 1956 and 1990. Some of these people, including myself, are still alive. We had direct, face-to-face -face meetings with the friends, also called W56, who are extraterrestrials coming both from planets in our own galaxy, at a distance of 200,000 light years, and from other galaxies. Here on the Earth they reached the maximum number of 200, living inside underground and undersea bases, some of them along the Adriatic coast, at a depth of about 20 kilometers slash 12 miles. The first, historical base was located under the area of Asclepiceno, a small town in central Italy. Now, I shall briefly refer things that derive exclusively from what I was involved in personally, during an extensive part of my life, and from our direct conversations with the friends. I have viva voce recordings of these, with the friends own voices. Friendship gathers together various extraterrestrial populations that are different from each other, both as regards physical characteristics, there are tall, small and giant friends, etc and provenance, there are friends from other universes and dimensions. However, all of them share a fundamental choice towards good. Friendship is a sort of transversal confederation on the basis of a common ideal of life and thought, though great diversifications remain between populations and individuals and between personal choices. This is the very opposite of ideological standardization. The population whom we personally interacted with is composed of individuals, men and women, like us, who are physically very beautiful, some about 3 meters, 10 feet, tall, while others are tiny. However, these are secondary aspects only. What is important is what they represent, beyond the various typologies and endless folkloristic singularities. The friends are our elder brothers. They are human. Indeed, in comparison it's we terrestrials who are less than human. They are much more human than we are and that is why they do not show themselves. They are too human a broken bar for us it is easy to flatter them, but envying them is even easier, due to their perfect humaneness a broken bar other populations in the universes have chosen evil, which is often represented by the adoration of energy and knowledge science. This dualism between good and evil is fundamental in order to understand both the still ongoing struggle and why it is so hard for truth to be disclosed to the inhabitants of our planet. The struggle between good and evil has always existed and is real, not an invention or a stage effect. The wicked are not the result of a failed scientific experiment but can freely choose to change and follow good. This struggle between good and evil also entered the life of the terrestrials in our group, and transformed them into particular beings. We had various types of experiences, both mental and moral and phenomenal, face-to-face -face encounters with some of the friends, conversations with them, sightings of saucers and other flying objects with different shapes very close sightings of materializations and dematerializations, visits and even long stays inside the underground bases, etc. These marked our personal lives deeply and indelibly and caused us to become particularly vulnerable to the laws, regulations and conventions of our own reality and society where we continued to live and work with the exception of a few of us who chose to spend the rest of their lives together with the friends. What we experienced with the friends goes beyond any imagination. As a consequence, absolute silence with other people has been the most normal reaction from us together with our continuous thinking about our experiences over the decades. It was and still is a kind of mental mulling and constantly growing awareness of what happened, together with the realization that it cannot easily be put into words. Some of us paid a very high price for our being singled out, and abandoned established work and social life patterns. Some of us kept it a total or almost total secret, only opening up to a very few people. Others told the story but gave a partial or modified version of it on purpose. Why? There are many reasons and they are complex because there are things one just cannot say even when one has decided to speak out. Furthermore, much of the information has been heavily distorted, trivialized, 
manipulated and interpreted in arbitrary ways. There has also been contradictory information given, so that a thing has been said and immediately afterwards contradicted thus generating doubts and, in the end, incredulity on the part of the readers or listeners. This has also touched the fundamental aspects and reasons for the friend's presence among us, and that is why it is now necessary to intervene rectifying and above all giving the essential points that have not yet been told and denouncing where the opposite has been claimed. The point is that this story and its implications are very complex, where ambiguity, voluntary or involuntary disinformation and a mixture of true and false play a highly important role. Inserting just one obviously unreliable element for instance, something self-contradictory or ridiculous into a story which is true makes the whole thing look unreliable, which may indeed well be the conscious or unconscious aim of the person who relates the story. This is not accidental, and does not solely depend upon the bad intention of the person who writes or speaks out or reveals or pretends to be a protagonist while he or she merely has second or third hand knowledge of the subject. On the contrary, this is the consequence of one of the laws that regulates the hidden presence of the friends on earth. And this is how it has always been in the past as well as now. The presence of the friends among us is subordinated to certain laws that depend on factors that are hard to explain in words for they belong to the subtle levels that is, the non-physical levels of reality. Among these there is the law of ambiguity, duplicity and deception since this characterizes the condition of terrestrial humans. Thus, all these negative elements are not secondary, but are a crucial part of the rules of the game and can come into play at any moment, including the moment when an attempt towards disclosure is being made such as at this present moment. The friends are not the only extraterrestrials who have come to the earth. Individuals from various other populations are among us, because the earth is a very particular planet inside the economy of this part of the universe. The aim of the friends' presence is not to study us, they know us quite well, better than we do ourselves, but to help us. In fact, the friends are unhappy about the very high level of hate, violence and injustice on the earth, and about the anti-humanistic trend of our science and technology. Being able to see our thoughts and feelings, the friends see what we hide behind our masks, words and smile as a broken bar other populations are here for other reasons, and the abduction by extraterrestrials of terrestrials, as well as the creation of hybrids is a reality which the friends told us about as far back as the 60s. I mention this because today there is talk in the media about it, and I remember what the friends said so many years ago. However, I know nothing about many of the other things I hear about, and I have no opinion to give, because the friends did not mention them. For instance, I know nothing about the crop circles. The friends told us a lot and yet they told us only a very small part of what they knew, including what they knew about the activities of other populations among us. Actually, I find it hard enough to understand and digest the events I saw and those the friends spoke about, let alone all the rest they could have told you Sabrokin Bar however, I believe they gave me the essentials in order to understand and orient myself things that are true and not just information. I say that these things are true because I had a personal relationship with the friends and had the strong feeling that they were telling me the truth such as when you feel that your best friend or your lover is telling you the truth. This has been the luck in my life, thanks to that personal relationship, I was and am able to trust, in a field where trusting is quite difficult. Today, so-called objective evidence, pictures, etc can be altered or created by means of technology, so the factor of personal reliable witness is even more important than in the past. Compared with all the other populations visiting the earth, the friends have a quite peculiar and precious characteristic to offer us, they have a very special and close connection with the subtle levels that regulate the destiny of the earth and with what they call the soul of the universe, beyond the physical or phenomenal level. Thus. The friends have a sort of general control over everything that occurs, but they are only allowed to intervene under particular conditions. Everything happens as in an extremely elaborate chess game, with rules that I cannot even touch upon here. The friends refer to themselves not as belonging to the world of the spirit, 
but as those who come just after the world of the Spirit. They also say they are the forerunners of the world of the Spirit. In other words, they place themselves as intermediaries between us and the world of the Spirit. Compared with the science and technology of the other extraterrestrial populations, the friends science and technology is quite different and singular because it is shaped upon the laws of the world of the spirit. It is a science and technology that has no connection at all with ours, including the most innovative aspects of our quantum physics. Yet, the friends also have another and more usual science and technology, which they tried partially to share with us, especially in the field of electromagnetism. But this aroused feelings of avidity, possession, competition and omnipotence in us. So the friends retired from this sharing project. The friends have won a great war in the universe against the evil populations, but the game on the earth is still completely open. Both the minds of us terrestrials in the group, forever linked to the friends by an ancient pact, and the minds of the terrestrials whom we address as is happening now are involved in this war. In fact, this war also takes place in our most intimate spheres and on levels that we are unaware of which makes the whole matter very difficult and hard to express. Rationality is essential, but it is not enough to explain phenomena, interactions and consequences that are beyond all that society and knowledge science have accustomed and conditioned us to. Indeed, the rationality which is needed in order to cope with this story and its implications is by far richer and more elaborate than the rationality that our scientists normally use. It is also by far richer and more elaborate than the rationality which is involved in philosophical systems such as Buddhism with its cause-effect law. Indeed, the latter only represents one piece of an overall explanation that is enormously more complex and articulated. The teachings of the friends have not yet been divulged, but when they are they will allow us to deal with this intricate conceptual and experiential muddle with a new awareness. Transcendence of what we also call God is at the very core of the teachings of the friends. This should not be confused with the soul of the universe mentioned above. Here, we have the very opposite of pantheism. For now, however, I am obliged to stop here, though this is by far the most important point and the main reason for the friend's presence among us, as they themselves told us. The picture shown here was made with a Polaroid in the 60s. It represents the fundamental aspect of the relationship between our group and the friends. The picture reproduces the projection of a giant subtle body. What is significant is the emphasis of the heart area as the central part, which means that love is the most important thing for human beings, both terrestrial and extraterrestrial. Ureda in one of the friends' languages is the energy that is produced by the love between people, particularly between the friends and our group, following a pact between them and us and the many events that brought us together. Ureda is a kind of energy, but the friends are not the worshippers of energy as other populations are. The friends follow love, which is also the source of good energies such as Ureda, but is itself beyond any energy. Thanks to special instruments that work on the subtle levels, there are tens of subtle levels, the friends transform Ureda into other energies and objects, even the oxygen they breathe in their underground and undersea bases. If Ureda is lacking, the friends die for they have chosen to be vulnerable out of love. Moreover, the friends chose to be dependent upon material help, food, mainly fruits and vegetables, that we provided for them. This occurred by means of remote control dematerializations, that I personally saw and was involved in so many times over the years. We called them the friends pickups. Even tons of food at a time were dematerialized, at a distance of one meter, three feet from our eyes and immediately afterwards were rematerialized inside the friends bases. In other cases, using the same system the friends would send us large or small objects, that were materialized under our very eyes. In order to be allowed to stay here with us, the friends were obliged to accept the law of time and especially the law of having that regulate the destiny of our planet. If one ignores or does not fully understand the friends voluntary loving dependence upon the law of having, upon our thoughts and actions in the end, one cannot grasp the true meaning of the story as it occurred, and will not be prepared if the story occurs again perhaps even in a more widespread form. Today, the new so-called postmodern paradigms of terrestrial knowledge, 
adding to the paradoxes of quantum physics, open people's minds to accept that reality may not be what it appears to be, or not just what it appears to be. The idea that we may be like children who are playing inside a room and are unaware of all the events that are occurring around them, even unaware of all the other contents of the room itself, except the toys, today may appear less absurd than it did in the past. However, the true acceptance not just at a playful or virtual level, but at a level of real awareness of an extraterrestrial world among us still represents a mind-blowing anthropological and cognitive revolution much more so than the Copernican revolution. Just as an example, in the past, hundreds of millions of years ago, on the earth there were six civilizations, which were even more advanced than ours and which disappeared, due to their own fault. This is also a threat to us today. The friends, who saw our self-destructive past with sorrow, don't want it to be repeated again. They are able to help us and do so, but they are obliged to operate within restrictions and conditions that are imposed by the subtle levels of the earth and of our universe. Incidentally, all of us completely ignore the existence of these restrictions and conditions. Such is the complexity of the variables involved, that the friends never predicted anything about Disclosure Day. I never heard them speak about 2012 that so many people mention. Instead, they said they would come back again among us. Those like myself, one of the very few of us still alive, made a special agreement with the friends, swearing a solemn oath of reciprocal allegiance which still binds us though so many years have passed since then. But I do not know if and when they will be back. Or, maybe, they are already back and are at work with other terrestrials in some other part of the world. I do not know if they will contact me. I do not believe so. I think that my only task which incidentally, the friends themselves told me a long time ago is to recount these things that I have now begun to tell Mr. Nicola Duper. At the end of the forties, the friends offered their collaboration to the head of the USA administration. In exchange, they asked that the nuclear weaponry program be given up. But their offer and request were rejected, and other extraterrestrial populations have been collaborating with the USA and other powers. The results of this have been highly negative, and still weigh heavily on our collective destiny. One of the reasons there are others which delay disclosure is the fact that the USA administration should assume responsibility before the whole planet for having refused a vital collaboration and for having activated another highly negative one, exclusively for the sake of power and domination, lying to citizens and covering up for decades. Following the American politico-military refusal, the Friends undertook the strategy consisting in confidential contacts with small groups of terrestrials, trying to emphasize the quality of human personal relationships, the value of love and ureda, rather than quantity and visibility. However, even these qualitative contacts failed to give the expected fruits, so today it is necessary to start again with the Friends. However, there is never a definitive defeat because their resources are quite extraordinary. When the friends lose a battle, the reason is that we lost it, and they have to lose it with us and pay with us and for us, submitting to the laws of our subtle levels. In November 1978 our lack of ureda towards the friends caused the death of many of them, and their momentary defeat by the enemy population called CTRA defeat that the friends had predicted and considered a foregone event. However, the situation is still reversible. The adventure of the friends with us is an extraordinary hidden drama, with unforeseeable events partially unforeseeable for the friends too, due to the incredible complexity of the variables involved and to the imponderability of free choice. The friends have an infinite respect for people's free will. Every day, terrestrial collaborators of the friends and terrestrial collaborators of populations who are enemies of the friends, and thus are our own enemies, silently fight with each other. The enemies are trying to conquer our planet in a very gradual and seemingly painless way, most of all working over our minds. Unfortunately, this is not science fiction. If only it were so. Unfortunately, this is not paranoia. If only it were so. However, 
just hinting at these subjects leads to the discrediting of the person who says or writes them and this is a powerful weapon in the hands of those who want to harm us. Mental and social conditionings in this field are extremely strong. It is easy to discredit anyone, whatever their social or cultural position, if one has strong motivations to do so. If someone has had highly secret experiences, such as this with the friends, and then strangely obtained an important position within society and is respected as a reliable person, they fear to be discredited, if they reveal their secret. Moreover, they fear that speaking out will discredit the thing itself. They know that those conditionings will be stronger anyway than their social or cultural position and the esteem they have gained over a whole lifetime. So, they keep silent, while they would desire to speak only the truth without wanting anything for themselves. But others speak others who do not know the truth or do not want the truth to be known. They speak out of self-promotion or for profit, and they do not risk being discredited, because they have nothing to be discredited for. Today this happens in every country, and is fully exploited by all the people and institutions that do not want disclosure to occur. What actually happens is that people either tend not to really believe revelations, or else they fool themselves into believing, or at most they suspend their judgment, knowing that those revelations come from people who aim at self-promotion or profit and do not fear being discredited. I shall try to provide a systematic and point-articulated exposition, as soon as possible. The global scenario is extremely complex as it also includes the presence and activities of the other extraterrestrial populations among us. However, if we consider this scenario under the perspective that the friends offer us, at least we have a connecting thread and a general sense. This is possible because the friend's perspective is a privileged one, because of their very special relationship with the subtle levels and the soul of the universe. Under any other perspective the scenario would not just be too complex it would even be undecipherable and, in the end, one of despair, one of the sworn ones, incognito for now,